I guess we might as well start. I hear you asking, what on earth is Funafuti? Or more to the point, where in the world is it? Well, Google Maps marks the spot. It's about 40, uh, 48 hours north of Fiji sailing on a good fast cruise ship. Funafuti is the capital of Tuvalu, by population the second smallest independent country in the world, but a full-fledged member of the United Nations since 2000. There are roughly 11,000 Tuvaluans on the planet, so about a quarter of the number of Bozemanites. In total land area, Tuvalu is the fourth smallest independent nation in the world. Ten square miles of dry land, roughly a tenth the size of Washington, D.C., scattered <coughs> over an area of ocean the size of Montana, Washington, Idaho, and North Dakota. This is what Funafuti looks like if you arrive by sea. Please note that where atolls are concerned, there's no land higher than about two yards above sea level. To, uh, so there's nowhere to seek shelter when giant storms bear down on you. We entered the atoll through the big opening you can see in the northwest of the map and sailed for 20 or 30 minutes across the lagoon to the one sizable hunk of land there on the east. It was clear we had arrived in a foreign country when the Tuvaluan in immigration inspectors boarded our ship to check us in. Our 65 Fiji Princess passengers made up the largest group of tourists Tuvalu had ever hosted at one time. And many of our Fijian crew members were also eager to step ashore in their first foreign country. Their ship usually stays within Fijian waters. A significant amount of this tiny scrap of land is taken up by the International Airport, which gets all of two flights weekly. The runway was originally built by American Seabees in 1944 and has been expanded with the help of other benevolent nations. Runway construction dredged up much of the island's sand and soil, leaving behind borrow pits that fill with seawater during storms. The freshwater lens under the island has also been contaminated. Rain is the only source of fresh water, yet Funafuti suffers frequently from drought. There's very little land remaining to grow food for the island's growing population, so food is imported either from other islets in the atoll or from the outside world at great expense. There's also a shortage of space for graves, which often end up crowded next to the homes. But this is a nation, and the nation must have a government. Most salaried workers in Tuvalu are government employees. <coughs> At least, their new government headquarters has solar panels on the roof to help run the technology that a modern bureaucracy requires. And every nation needs a national bank. Ah, but you ask, what is Tuvalu's economy based upon? Well, you know those national suffixes in website addresses, .jp means Japan, .fr means France. Tuvalu lucked out. They got .tv. <laughs> Tuvalu's major cash income comes from licensing their .tv suffix. <laughs> At the height of the .com boom, they took in $50 million uh, in a period of 12 years. Of course, with tropical islands, tourism also comes to mind. Perhaps I should just shut up and let you contemplate the most thought-provoking travel slogan I've ever seen. Take your wants off and put our happiness on. <laughs> <laughs> Funafuti does have a hotel, although the online reviews have not been terribly enthusiastic. <laughs> Neither were the first reactions to Funafuti of some of my fellow passengers as we pulled up at our first tourist site, which appeared to be a piece of old wartime construction equipment, the woman sitting beside me on the bus proclaimed in an embarrassing loud voice, what a dump! <laughs> Whereupon my cousin Claudia changed buses 
and set out to save the local economy by buying as many souvenirs as she could find. <laughs> With sea levels rising, storms intensifying, and no high land on which to seek shelter, Tuvalu seems doomed. And yet, as Cousin Claudia was quick to point out, the people seem to find life worth living. Thanks to construction and storms, there's no sand left on the beaches of Funafuti to bury one's head in. So you'd think people would be making a plan to deal with the challenges of climate change, but the urgency seems to have faded, just like the billboard. The Tuvaluans we talked to said, ah, oh, the government worries about that. Tuvalu's much larger and more populous neighbor, Kiribati, has seen the writing on the wall. The Kiribati government has purchased a tract of land in the highlands of Fiji as a future homeland if and when it's needed. I love the way the Kiribati flag shows them keeping their head above the waves. Perhaps I read too much science fiction as a kid, but I can't help seeing parallels between Funafuti and this planet that is our home. Population increasing, arable land shrinking, check. Supplies of fresh water decreasing, check. Serious storms increasing, check. Understanding of climate change, vague. Uh -huh. <laughs> climate change has the potential to create refugees on a scale that will dwarf the current crisis in Europe. And there's not room for everybody in the mountains of Fiji, some of which are shown here which is why I worry that I may have seen the future of humanity in Funafuti. <laughs>